वेरी वेलकम अभिषेक मोस्ट वेलकम टू आवर फर्स्ट पॉडकास्ट ऑफ द चैनल बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द वीडियो द पॉडकास्ट लेट अस नो अबाउट योर सेल्फ व्हाट यू आर डूइंग एंड वेयर डू यू लीव अबाउट योर सेल्फ या श्योर सो करेंटली आई एम लाइक अ फाउंडर ऑफ अ सास कंपनी व्हिच इज लाइक अ सॉफ्टवेयर कंपनी एंड आई एम लिविंग इन इंडिया आई एम बेस्ड आउट ऑफ कर्नाटका सो दिस इज अ स्मॉल टाउन इन कुमटा कर्नाटका so i'm living there currently and uh, yeah i've been like a developer most of my life like software engineer and uh, then i moved to building my own products yeah. okay what inspired you the most of or related like to your software journey to be a software engineer um, i'd say just yeah so mostly creating things like uh, that's what like uh, gives me the most fulfillment so like creating software building companies uh, things like that so that actually gives me the most fulfillment so that's like why i'm doing it currently okay so uh, actually tell us about your qualification background okay yeah so i'm actually not a software developer in normal education like uh, i haven't done actual engineering Uh, I'm actually a BMS graduate, so uh, that's like a commerce field. So uh, after doing BMS, I started my first company when I was about 18 years old, and I studied uh, bachelor's of management studies for about three years, and then I got did my degree, and then uh, after that I started working full time for my own company, and then uh, like I ran that company for about three years, and then in COVID I had to shut that company down. Uh, it was actually a pet services company so we had a application for that also like a web app and uh, software as well as service both combined and uh, yeah and then i switched to like uh, software development industry so i don't have any actual educational knowledge but i learned everything from uh, myself so like uh, self taught yeah uh, what was your startup uh, when you are saying that you started uh, you startup uh, at yeah. 18 year old So what was that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was actually a pet services company. So it was like dog walking, pet sitting, things like that. So in urban areas like uh, in Mumbai and um, large cities, people have like pets, but they don't have time to take care of the pets, like to give them daily walks. Uh, if they go out of town, then they need somebody to stay at their house to take care of the pet. So uh, all of these services we used to hire contractors, and they used to like uh, do all these services. So uh, that was like the startup. So you built the tech uh, tech space of that startup or what? Yeah, yeah. So I I was building the website also for that. So basically, you could uh, like manage all your employees. Like uh, suppose you are a pet owner and you have a person coming to walk your dog every day. So then you can like book a new per, uh, client. You can book a new uh, person to come. you can see what timings they will come what the total month how many days they have come what are payments are things like that so uh, basically like automating everything uh, on to the software you were alone or with a co-founder founder yeah so uh, i had two other co-founders and uh, yeah then how was the idea came in your mind to this startup which currently you are doing Uh, the current startup which I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah. So currently we're working on actually. Um, so we're working on a software which is like uh, which is like an all-in-one marketing solution. So uh, actually, being a developer myself, uh, I faced a lot of issues where I built a lot of products, right? And I'll build a lot of uh, softwares, but then I'm not able to find customers for that, right? so uh, i faced this problem a lot so then i started going into the marketing world like how do you do content marketing learning about that how to do sales things like that so that's where i actually led me down to the path of whenever you do marketing and things like that at a larger scale you need some software to implement the strategies otherwise you end up failing like it becomes very hard for you to uh, implement strategies consistently on an everyday basis because marketing and sales is like a very slow process you have to constantly be doing outreach you have to constantly be doing content marketing things like that and uh, i found the software which would like we basically have not built the software from scratch but we found a software where you could use the engine and build on top of that 
So if you look at the software development world, almost 80-90% of software already exists out there. Right. So we said instead of building it from scratch, we'll find this, uh, we'll build on top of something that already exists. So we're building on top of an engine called Go High Level. Okay. So uh, that's like an all-in-one marketing tool. So we're building on top of that and adding our own services, our own features specific to our industry and the people we want to serve. So uh, that's how we started. Okay. Like who is your target customer? Yeah. So initially, so uh, initially we started out with YouTubers, like um, to help them out. But we are finding a bit of an issue with like uh, it being too broad because multiple YouTubers have multiple use cases and things like that. So now, so now we have like um, like uh, narrowed it down to like a single market, and we are now providing uh, the software for mental health coaches and uh, consultants. So basically, people who do counseling and people who do psychiatry like medical professionals so for them to grow their business and help them to uh, improve their marketing so uh, that's what we'll be currently focusing because even you must have seen like if you try and go for like a larger market you might not end up getting anybody and you it's a bit harder for you to create like pre-built software pre-built solution for them because you have so many different people you're catering to then it becomes a bit hard to know which one uh, to build something out for them from before so this is why we are like focusing on one specific niche like I am a content creator then how this platform can help me to work make my work effective and efficient yeah yeah so uh, so for content creators if you see like um, most content creators uh, have like YouTube is a very unreliable source of money so like unless you are a large YouTube cre content creator then only you get decent enough ad revenue to sustain yourself so you have to rely on other methods like merch, uh, affiliate marketing uh, then courses uh, all of these other uh, additional streams of revenue so what you can do is you can build all of these additional streams of revenue on the software itself like you can have like a whole funnel built out your web page you can have a merchandise store built out all of this stuff will be on one single platform so you can manage that and also this platform will help you get in more customers so it can help you with the marketing aspects like sending out emails um, and things like that so yeah okay so are you running this startup with your founder that same founder co-founder no no so currently I have uh, I'm running it alone and uh, I have two employees with me yeah so tell us your daily routine like how what time you got up and then what all do you do yeah yeah so mostly um, like I wake up by around 7 30 and uh, then in the morning by around from 8 to 8 45 I meditate uh, in the morning and then by 9 I have my breakfast and I do a bit of like uh, journaling and um, like re reading the bible a bit and things like that uh, for like 15-20 minutes and then afterwards I plan out like my uh, day like what I'll be doing uh, in terms of each time block so I split my day up into like 30, hour, 30 minute time blocks and then I like assign from the start itself that okay I'll spend like this on this time and things like that so uh, I plan that out and then at around 10 o'clock I have like a meeting with my uh, uh, other employees and we discuss like what the plan for the day is, what they have to do, if there are any blockers they are facing, uh, what our goals are, things like that. So we like discuss and then we, uh, then we assign like I assign them tasks if required and then we continue like uh, whatever I make in my plan, I continue till about like uh, 1 o'clock I have my lunch and then um, yeah by f uh, I work again till like uh, 4 or 5 then from 5 to 6 I go to the gym and then after that I come back and then I um, like I handle a few clients for software development also so then uh, once I'm back like by around uh, 6 6 30 I start to work on that and 6 30 to 11 30 uh, I continue working and about like half an hour 30 minutes I'll take a break for uh, dinner and then I usually sleep by around 11 30 so uh, that's pretty much my schedule. Oh, it's look yeah. like it's look like you are super hard worker. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, see. Uh, do you believe in work-life balance? 
uh, <laughs> I don't believe in work life balance. Um, yeah, like um, like work is pretty much like what I enjoy a lot. So then, um, like I pretty much do that Monday to Sunday. Like I work almost all seven days. Uh, it's just that I spend like a bit of time. Uh, yeah, that's that's what. Like, see, if you're completely passionate about something, then um, uh, for you to become good at it in the long run, you have to make it like uh, your number one priority. Yeah, that's why we both are doing this podcast on Sunday. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. So um, yeah, that's what. That's the only way because see, everybody else is not willing to put in the work, and the moment you uh, like make that sacrifice, you are already ahead of like most of the crowd. So it's just a matter of time, like uh, how much time it will take for you to uh, succeed at that, and uh, it's what we like doing. So yeah, we're enjoying it along the way. One more question: Like, uh, if you are you are selling your software, right? And how do you set the pricing? Like, if somebody want uh, have made his software and he want to set the pricing, then what all are the things he should consider while setting the price? Yeah, so I'd say there are two types of pricing. One is like uh, it depends. Like, uh, there's a either value based pricing. So that depends on what type of value you are offering to your customers. So that will usually be a higher ticket type of price. So like softwares which go for like thousand dollars or like two hundred dollars per month, five hundred dollars per month, those are usually like higher ticket softwares. So those you're not competing on a price point. You're competing for a premium. So you have to first decide what your strategy is. Like if you're, excuse me, if you're willing to compete on a value based uh, thing, then you can price your uh, product on how much value you think it will give to the customer. So like if you're bringing in about five thousand dollars of revenue for a, a client, then they are for sure going to uh, pay for your two hundred dollar software, right? So that is the value based uh, approach. Then is the cost based approach, which is like you look at the market and you look at your competitors and see, okay, people are offering this software for twenty thirty dollars. So I will also price myself according to the market. So then you can like see, okay, what features are doing, how much it costs you. Then add on top of that like twenty thirty percent. Uh, your margins and in software anyways your costs are slightly lesser so then your margins like depend on each uh, industry so normally they take like about 50% uh, uh, profit on top of that so uh, yeah so these two approaches you can follow okay like what are the marketing strategies you use to promote your market your software yeah so currently see since in the it depends on what stage you are at so like there are like multiple stages a company is at if a company has already validated their uh, product okay and they have found like okay the market ha- there is a need for this in the market okay so then you can uh, go into like paid ads you can do heavy content marketing things like that whereas if you're starting out uh, i normally suggest to do organic uh, outreach and just speak to your own network like whoever you feel is like uh, part of that connect with people on linkedin send them messages offer their product for free things like that and then get their feedback because what we want to do is like the current stage we are at in is we are trying to validate the product on the market and we are trying to see if like there's a good fit between both of them so uh, that's what we are doing so in that scenario you don't want to waste your money on paid advertising so because your product is not yet been validated you might have to change like in the starting we first decided to target youtubers right which is a broad uh, thing so uh, that after w- uh, working on it for a couple of months we found that okay that's too broad so then we had to change our direction so now imagine in the starting if i would have paid like 20k for ads 20000 for ads 10000 for ads then all of that would have gone for waste so that's why you have to like speak to your users in the starting as much as possible and then uh, like do as much uh, organic outreach as possible until you get it validated like until people are buying your product and uh, people see an actual need then i'd suggest to go and uh, invest a lot more time on content marketing uh, on paid ads things like that so uh, th- that's like my pretty much my strategy uh, what's your sales process and revenue model like is it you use your software one time is your software one time or subscription based yeah so ours is a subscription based model so uh, since we will be 
uh, adding more features along the way and this is like the start so we'll be providing ongoing support ongoing content and things like that so that's why we have chosen like a subscription based model and software also has a lot of recurring costs like hosting and things like that which you pay on a monthly basis so that's why most softwares you'll see will have like a subscription model that's the same thing we are following okay what's your future plan for your personal as well as for your startup my future plan is just to uh, uh, like uh, personally i just enjoy building companies and working on software so that's like my uh, uh, like i'll continue to do that as long as i have uh, the energy and time to do it so uh, my goal is to like do that full time and not have to worry on uh, external clients and other like uh, work for uh, other software projects and that's my main goal and uh, yeah so for the company also it's like to start out with this uh, engine that we have started with and build features on top of that and actually make a product that our niche should need on a daily basis so that's our goal what all the problems you faced when you were in your initial phase when you were 18 years old and when you were you were building the your startup that pet startup <laughs> yeah so i faced a, a quite a lot of problems like uh, in terms of see you need to understand uh, various concepts in business like leverage how things can scale like uh, because see what we were doing at that current stage was like a non scalable type of uh, business so like you have to hire contractors then you have to train the contractors and then even if you get like customers you can't like scale at a rapid pace you have to like it takes a month after month process for you to add people and then grow your business so the growth is extremely slow so you have to understand leverage like what what leverage you can offer to the market and how you can grow a company like what what is the scope for a company so for us like in terms of software you have much more leverage because your uh, the underlying software that you're using is the same and just the number of clients are increasing so you don't have to every new additional client you don't have to spend any cost your software is already built but you just have to spend on sales and marketing so that's a much more uh, like scalable model so that's one thing which i didn't understand like uh, in the start uh and also a lot of things about like pricing and uh, like not having a value based approach so we used to underprice our market a lot things like that and uh, we should not talk to users so uh, we should not get enough feedback so uh, yeah so those things i definitely say that uh, you speak to a market as soon as possible and assess and see also the scope of your uh, idea like how large can it become what is the, how much time it will take to get you there uh thanks for that okay like from how many years are you in this entrepreneurship and building so many things um uh, i'd say from 18 itself so like i'm currently 26 so uh, around 8 years i've been doing it and for about 2 years i was working as uh, as an employee in another startup so that also gave me a lot of experience to see first hand like uh, what startups actually do like how do they grow how do they what happens when they get funding things like that so uh, yeah so but i've always constantly been been building things on the side so uh, that's since that's been my passion so about 8 years i've been doing it like, uh, before starting my agency i also worked in a startup and then i started my own agency because it gives you the experience the exactly. atmosphere how things work in a startup yeah so one thing one thing yeah. based on your advice one thing based on your experience what advice will you give to the upcoming entrepreneurs or someone who want to start his startup um i definitely say that um uh like you should have like uh, don't directly jump into like uh, like unless you have some good enough industry insight okay like experience as you mentioned in us uh, like you need to have enough experience like real world experience because now what people see is like they just want to start a business directly off the bat so they don't have any understanding so those are most likely going to fail uh, in terms of startups so work in an industry 
okay which people which might seem boring to other people okay like insurance things like that each industry has its own quirks has its own things like that so i'll suggest get some knowledge okay and the moment you spend like say one two years in an industry you will automatically understand but okay this market has these gaps so once you understand those gaps from an insider perspective then you can go out and build your own product so that's what i suggest like and uh, by the time the moment you are uh, done with that when you start building out a product you will already have a network okay because since you have already been working like say for example you worked in the insurance industry for 2 years okay and then you see okay i want to have uh, this type of product so then you start building that out since you are already in that insurance industry you will already have a network of people who can use your product right off the bat because getting your first 3 4 customers is extremely hard so that's like the hardest part so since you have already been in that industry you can like uh, offer it to your friends or customers people who are like uh, willing to try it out because of they know you so do that and then you can slowly start to scale so that's the advice i'd give you are absolutely right uh, like when i started my agency i i have i had a experience of 4 years because i was working in the content creation industry i was doing so many stuff i was with the startup also so it gives you the idea that how things work and if you will do the same thing in your exactly yeah, how things you can do in your startup how someone can sure. contact you to buy or like take subscription of your software how he can contact you yeah yeah so uh, i'll send my link so yeah, probably in the description you can put the link of our website and uh, i'm on linkedin also so uh, abhishek joseph on linkedin so you can like uh, connect with me there and send me a message if you need yeah so it's around 22 minutes so do you want to say something more or let's just keep it and yeah yeah this is fine yeah this is it yeah, thanks good. for watching this podcast i hope you all loved it so that's it thank you yeah thanks see you guys